Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan Awesome, and welcome to the Ryan Awesome Show. Now, before we get into the show, first off, man, if you haven't done this already, man, what are you waiting for, man? Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, and right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you click on that bell so you're the first ones to know when my next video will come out because I'm here each and every single week. So make sure you hit the thumbs up if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. And then next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. You click on that bell. And when you click on that bell, you'll be the first ones to know when my next video is uploaded. And one last thing. And one last thing. Don't forget to be awesome. So, yeah, don't forget to be awesome. And, yeah, man, sit back, chillax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, because you're watching The Ryan Awesome Show. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Ryan Awesome Show. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan Awesome, and welcome to the Ryan Awesome Show. Now today, on the Ryan Awesome Show, we'll be talking about Impact Wrestling for August the 26th, 2021. Man, with this show, man, you know, we had a... Great night. Great night of wrestling, man. Great night of wrestling matches, man. I love the matches on the show tonight. I thought they were really good, you know. And tonight's show, very, very newsworthy show. Very newsworthy show. We have Victory Road that's coming up in September. And they're they're starting to build up to Victory Road. And we saw that tonight with Christian Cage and Ace Austin. So they will be, Christian Cage will be defending his championship against Ace Austin at Victory Road. And, yeah, we have Bound for Glory, too, man. We have Bound for Glory that's coming in October, so I can't wait for that. You know, we have AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Triple A, and Impact Wrestling all being in Bound for Glory. So that's really cool, man. I can't wait to see that. And so, yeah, man, so that was, that, that was everything with tonight, man. So they building up to Victory Road, and, yeah, that that's pretty much it, man. But, yeah. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a perfect show. There were some things that I did question on the show. There were a match there was a match on the show that I didn't like, but you know, still it was still a good show. It was it was a good show. So yeah, man. So so yeah, that that was pretty much it with Impact Wrestling. And yeah, man, if you haven't done this already, man, what are you waiting for, man? Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, if you're watching the Ryan Awesome Show for the first time ever, hit that subscribe button, and then right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you click on that bell to so be the first ones to know when my next video is uploaded, because I am here each and every single week, man. Tuesdays for NXT, Wednesdays for AEW Dynamite, Thursdays for Impact Wrestling, Fridays for AEW Rampage, and Saturdays and Sundays are for the pay-per-views, man, where it is AEW pay-per-views, WWE pay-per-views, or Impact Wrestling pay-per-views. I'm here. And so, yeah, first off, man, we started off the show with a match, and it was Chris Saban versus The Draw, Sammy Callahan. And so, yeah, man, this is a really good match, really great match to start off the show, man. We had Saban. He took out Callahan during his entrance, and we had a power bomb to Saban while Saban had his jacket on, so that was really nice. And so the match finally began. And so Callahan, he had a Death Valley driver to Saban. And so Saban started fighting back. He had a PK kick to Callahan, follow up by a cannonball. And so, yeah, we had a power bomb. So Callahan had power bomb Saban again, but this time he power bombed him on a ring post, in a, in, into the ring post. And so, yeah, Callahan, he started chopping Saban. And so at one point, Callahan, he re went right after Chris Saban's eyes. And so Saban started fighting back. And so they were in the ring, and then Callahan had tripped up Saban on the middle rope. And so, 
And then Callahan, he had locked in an inverted Indian death lock to Saban. And so Saban, he grabbed the rope to break up the submission hold. And so Callahan, once again, so Callahan, once again, going for the eyes. And so Saban, he went right after Callahan's eyes. So that's payback. And so Saban hit a diving drop kick to Callahan. And he followed up with a haluva kick. And he followed that up with a tornado DDT. And so Callahan kicks out. And so both of these guys, they were going back and forth for strikes. And so they then they ended up knocking each other out with kicks. And so we had a This Is Awesome chant from the crowd. So indeed it was awesome, man. And so Saban, he super kicked Sammy Callahan. And so Callahan, he had the stomp. A version of the stomp is is, is the Wicked Stepsister. Or Candice LeRae's version of the stomp. The Wicked Stepsister to Saban. And so, yeah, we had Callahan. He had a power driver, man. He had a power driver to Saban, and he kicked out. And so at that point, I was like, what? I was like, what, man? Come on. Like, I, I, like, I thought that was it, man. That should have been it, man. The way that he landed off of that power driver, man, that was brutal, man. Absolutely brutal. And so, yeah, we had a deep roll, a deep roll up to Callahan for for a close one, too, man. That, that I thought that was it, too, man. And so to end the match, Saban, he had his finishing move, the cradle shock to Callahan to win the match. So Chris Saban wins the match. And so right after the match, we had Moose. We had Moose. He came out. He speared Callahan. Well, first off, he threw Saban out of the ring. He threw him out of the ring. And so Moose, he had speared Callahan. He speared Callahan. And so right after he speared him, he went under the ring. He grabbed the, the chair. He grabbed the chair and he grabbed the bat, Sammy's bat. And so, yeah. Moose, he had put the chair, he had put the chair right on top of Callahan, and he tried to hit Callahan with the with the bat, the same way that Callahan did to Eddie Edwards years ago, you know, when he had that chair over his face and everything, and he, he hit the chair, he hit the chair with the baseball bat, and it ricocheted, the bat ricocheted off the off the chair, and it hit Eddie Edwards in the face, and it, it didn't ruin his face, it ruined his whole entire face, so... Yeah, that that was an accident. That was an accident then. But yeah, man. So yeah, he tried to do the same thing to Sammy Callahan. And so we had Eddie Edwards. Speaking of Eddie Edwards, he came out. And he took out Moose with the kendo stick. And so yeah, man. So that was it with that, man. That was it with that. Just like what I said before, a great match to start off the show. And, you know, Sammy Callahan losing to Chris Saban. You know, it, it's not going to hurt Sammy Callahan. Sammy Callahan is bulletproof. He can take a loss. And, you know, Saban, he really needed that win because he's lately he's been on the on the on the end of losing. He's been on a losing stick a lot. It, it feels like it's been a lot. So, yeah, he really he really needed that win. And so, yeah, with this, with Edwards, with Eddie Edwards coming out, I don't know why. I don't know why he's helping Sammy Callahan. Like, I really don't know why. Like, they they hate each other, man. They really hate each other. So I don't know why, why he's going, why he's helping them out. Especially after that spot, man. After that baseball spot years ago. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why he's coming out and helping him. Like me, if I was Eddie Edwards, I would have stayed in the back. I would have stayed in the back and just watched it. I would have been like, man, it's karma, man. Karma is coming back to bite you. That, that's what I would have been. I, I would have stepped. I would have stayed in the back. But yeah, man. And so, yeah, even the interviewer had asked why he came out and helped Sammy Callahan. And so, yeah, man. So right after that, we had Gia Miller. She interviews Taylor Wilde. And so Taylor Wilde, she had challenged to Neil Dashwood, Madison Rain, and Caleb to a handicap match tonight. So, yeah, that's a dumb move, dumb move from Taylor Wilde. Why, why, like, why would you want to be in a handicap match? But, yeah, man, that was it with that. And so right after that, we had Gia Miller again. She interviews Eddie Edwards. So, so yeah, just like what I said earlier, the interviewer asked, why, why, did, why did you help him out? And so Callahan, he came out, he interrupted the interview. And so, you know, he had called Edwards out. He had called him out for being a hypocrite and all that stuff. And so Edwards, he had said that, you know, I helped you. You know, you helped me. And now that I help you, which makes us even. And so, yeah, and he said right after that, you know, we're done. We're done. You know, let's stay out of each other's way. We're done. And so that was it with that. And so, yeah, right after that, we had Mickey James. Mickey James, she came out, and she promoted NWA Empower. That's on Saturday, this Saturday. 
And so James has said that history, history would be made, not history, history would be made on Saturday. And so we had a history chant from the crowd. And so James, she had thanked the Impact faithful, the Impact fans. And so James, she had thanked Perazzo for putting our championship on the line at NWA and Power. And so James, she had showed a video package of the buildup between Perazzo and Molina for their championship match and all that stuff. And so Perazzo had came out with Matthew Raywalt. And Perazzo was holding two two of the belts, two championships, the AAA, their women's title and AAA. And, of course, the Impact Knockouts Championship. And so Perazzo, she had asked James, like, how does, now, now, how does it feel to have your spotlight stolen from you? You know, you did the same thing to me, and now I'm doing the same thing to you. So how exactly does it feel to have your spotlight taken from you? And so Perazzo, she said that she's excited. She's excited for NWA and power. And so Perazzo, she says that, you know, it's funny that you showed this video package and you forgot to show the emergence video package. You forgot to show the emergence, you know, spot in this video where we beat, where I beat Melina. And so Mickey James, she said that, hey, I don't know if you were watching the same match as I was watching, but as far as I'm concerned, you did not, you didn't, you did not beat Melina. It was Matthew Raywalt that beat Melina. And so, and so, yeah, that's, that's the truth. He did. He did beat Melina. He did pin Melina in that mixed tag team match. And I had a problem with that. You know, Melina never should have lost. It should have been Trey Miguel that got pinned in that match. But yeah, I digress. So yeah, so James, she has said that the difference between Emergence and NWA and Power is that, you know, Matthew Raywalt is not going to be at NWA and Power because it's an all women's event. And so James, she has said that, you know, with Matthew Raywalt not being there, we're going to see how truly, how how confident you truly are. And so James, she has said that Perazzo needs to take Melina seriously because if she doesn't, she will lose. And so Perazzo, she says to Mickey James, you know, why wait until, you know, why wait until Empower when I could kick your ass right now, right here and right now. And so... So James and Perazzo, they got in each other's faces and all that stuff. They got in each other's faces. So Perazzo attacked Melina. I mean, not Melina. She attacked Mickey James. And so Ray Walt tried to stop Mickey James for hurting Deanna Perazzo. And so that's when we had Trey Miguel came out and he took out Ray Walt. And so Perazzo and James, they were brawling. They were fighting. And so Melina had came out and took out Perazzo. And so, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it with that. So, yeah, of course, it's going to be Melina versus... Deanna Peraza for that Impact Knockouts Championship, and I'm pulling for Deanna Peraza to win, man. There is no reason she should lose. There is no reason. There is no reason why she should lose. She should always win, man. Peraza has been, Peraza has been on top of a game, bro. Ever since the she held that championship since the pandemic, bro. Since the pandemic to now, she's held that championship, and there is no way, no way, nobody should beat her for that title. And so, yeah, man, so that was it with that. So I'm actually pulling for Deanna Perrazzo to win. And so, yeah, man, so that was it. And so right after that, we had Chapter 31 on how to be a professional wrestler or how to be a professional with the most professional wrestler, Brian Myers, with Sam Bill. And so Myers, he was teaching Sam Bill how to look the part and everything. And so Bill, he has said that why, 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 today, why today's lesson is not about how to react when you lose a world championship title match. And so Myers, he was upset at that comment. And so Myers, he continued to teach Bill how to look the part and all that stuff. And he had like a t-shirt. He had an impact t-shirt. He started cutting up the t-shirt. He cut off the sleeves of the t-shirt and, and he, you know, he made it into a smaller t-shirt. You know, he, he made it into a sleeveless t-shirt, a, a small sleeveless t-shirt. And so Bill had put on a t-shirt and it was way too small for him. And so, and then he turned the sleeves into a headband. And so he put the headband on, on Bill. And so that was pretty much it with that. Oh I, I, man, I was wondering where, where was those lessons, man? Where was those lessons, those, 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 those videos lessons, those videos lessons. I was wondering like, where was it? Well, like we went from chapter five, I think, I think it was the last time we left off. It was on chapter five and we went, and we all the way in chapter 31. What happened to chapter 30? What happened to chapter 30? What happened to chapter 20? What happened to chapter 6 or 7, 8, 9, or 10? We went to chapter 31, man. 
But yeah, that was it with that. And so right after that, we had a match, and it was Chris Bay, the ultimate finesser. Chris Bay versus David Finley, one half of Finn Juice. And so Chris Bay, he, they did, they did a, a, a edit to his theme music. So he has the Bullet Club intro for his theme music until they play his actual theme music. So I thought that was really cool, man. And he has a new t-shirt that says Finesse Club. And, you know, it has his face as the, you know, as the Bullet Club skull and all that stuff. It looked really cool, man. Re looked really cool. And so, yeah, and it's on sale. It's on sale on Impact. So I might have to give me a shirt. And so, yeah. So, yeah, we had Finley and Bay. They went right after each other. And so we had a drop kick to Bay. And then Bay, you know, he tried to beg his way out of the match. But he ended up tricking David Finley. And so Bay took control of the match. We had a swing and neck breaker to Finley. Kicks out. And so Bay, he started kicking Finley over and over and over again. And so Bay, he had a cravat suplex to Finley, which was very nice, man. You usually don't see the cravat suplex that much. And so we had an over-the-top rope crossbody to Bay. And then Finley, he slammed Bay on a ring apron at one point. And so Finley, he had a diving European uppercut to Chris Bay, and he kicks out. And so Finley hit an Irish curse, an Irish curse backbreaker to, to Bay, and he kicks out. And so to end the match, man, we had a roll-up, man. We had a roll-up to Finley while Bay had his foot on the rope. So he put his foot on the rope to put, you know, to get that extra leverage, to get that extra pin on Bay. So Chris Bay cheated to win the match. So therefore, Chris Bay wins the match. And so right after the match, we had Finley. He tried to explain to the referee, like, what happened in the match and all that stuff. And the referee didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to hear it because, you know, referee decision is final. And so, yeah, that was it, man. Very competitive match between these two, man. Both guys are really great wrestlers, man. And so, yeah, the reason why this match happened was because of the attack from you know, the, the attack that happened on Juice Robinson last week. And so, yeah, it was either Chris Bay or, or Jay White. And so that's why this match happened. And so, yeah, man, so right after that, we had Rich Swan. We had Rich Swan and Willie Mack there backstage. They spoke. And so they talked about their match at Emergence, that triple threat tag team title match at Emergence. And they said that it wasn't their night that night. But, you know, they tried their hardest. But they were not pinned. They were not pinned. Their shoulders were not on the mat. And so Swan and Mac, they said that since the Good Brothers, they want to call themselves the best tag team in the world. How about we, how about, how about y'all put that to the test? You know, because we're challenging you guys to a match. And so they challenged them to a match. And so it was, uh, it was the main event tonight, that tag team championship, not tag team championship match, but a tag team match that was later on tonight. And so right after that, man, we had the Bound for Glory announcement. So the Bound for Glory is coming in October, in October, and it will be AEW, Impact Wrestling, Triple A, and New, J New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's going to be in Vegas too, man. Yes, bro. What what venue in Vegas? I don't know. Probably the MGM Grand. If I, or what, what other, st or that, what was it? Or the Allegiant Stadium? I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if they're going to be able to go there, the Allegiant Stadium. Either that or the MGM Grand. Where they had the double or nothing. I think the first ever double or nothing. Which which one was it? I think it was the first one. Either the first one or the second one. They had at the. No, it was the first one. It was the first one. Because the second one, it was the pandemic version of the double or nothing. So it was the first one. The first double or nothing. So it might be at the MGM. The MGM Center. Or the MGM Grand. Or whatever they called it in Vegas. So yeah, man. So AEW, Impact Wrestling, Triple A, and New Japan Pro Wrestling. All going to be in the same building, bro. I cannot wait for that, man. So I'm guessing it's going to be the top stars of AEW, the top stars of Impact, and the top stars of AAA, and the top stars of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Going at it, man. So yeah, so, that's, so that Forbidden Door, man, it is, it is all the way open, man. That Forbidden Door is all the way open, bro. So we might see a lot of guys, man. We might see a lot of guys come come through that, or that might be on that Bound for Glory show. You know, Omega definitely going to be on that show. Uh, Who else? Omega. Cage, Christian Cage. You could put Hiroshi Tanahashi. He might be there. Uh, what's his name? Will Osprey. He'll probably be there. Andrade El Idolo. Andrade El Idolo might might be might be there. You know, anybody. All the top stars of their respective companies, man, are gonna be there. And so yeah, man. So I can't wait. Oh yeah, Punk. Punk might be at that Bound for Glory show. So yeah, man. So. 
I'm telling you, man, that that night, man, the Bound for Glory show, oh my gosh, man. Probably would be the best show of the year. I'm calling it right now. It would be the best show of the year. Best pay-per-view show of the year. And so, yeah, man, so that was it with that. Oh, yeah, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan might be there. <laughs> Daniel Bryan might be there. And all these other free agents that's that's coming in. Adam Cole, if if he leaves the WWE, he might be there. Daniel Bryan. Punk, of course, definitely is going to be there, man. They better have Punk there. And so, yeah, man, anybody, man, anybody there, man. But, yeah, that was it. So, yeah, Bound for Glory, of course, is in October. So we have to wait for October. Yeah, so yeah, man. So that was it with that. And so right after that, we had Gia Miller. She interviews Josh Alexander, the reigning and defending X Division champion. And so Gia Miller had asked, who's your next opponent? Who's your next challenger? You know, because you talked about you want to defend this championship against the very best. Who's your next opponent? And so, yeah, so first he started talking about his match that he had with Jake something at Emergence, which was the best match on that show that night, man. I'm telling you. Probably match of the year, man. Probably match of the year. And so, yeah. And then Alexander, he said that next week, he said next week he's issuing an open challenge to all former X Division champions to step up to the challenge. So all former X Division champions, champions, if you want a championship opportunity, step up to me. Step up to me. And so, yeah, that was it with that. And so who, who, who will it be? It's got to be a former X Division champion. I don't know. I don't know who will it be. Probably an outsider who's a former X Division champion. I like, I really don't know. The only people, the only former X Division champions I could think of that's not in Impact Wrestling. Uh, I don't know. Who's, that's not in Impact Wrestling. I guess AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, <laughs> but they're in WWE, so that's not going to happen. But it might, it mainly might be somebody from maybe Impact, probably Impact. So, yeah, man. So, yeah, right after that, we had Christian Cage, the Impact World Champion. He came out to the ring and he spoke. And so the crowd started chanting for Christian Cage. And so Cage, he had said that he he beat Brian Myers at Emergence, just like he said he was going to do. And so he, and then he talked about Ace Austin, the number one contender for the Impact World Champion, Ace Austin. And so Cage, he, he grabbed the Impact World Championship and he started looking at it. And he was like, this world title... This Impact World title, and he kept looking at it, and the crowd was silent, man. The crowd was silent, and it was like this Impact World title, like I, I like nobody would know what was going on, so everybody was quiet. And so, at first, I thought he was gonna change the championship. I thought he was gonna bring out another championship to replace that Impact World title. And so he was like, "This World title, Ace Austin, he's not gonna beat me for this title." And so, yeah, the crowd had popped. And so K, so we had Tommy Dreamer, man. We had Tommy Dreamer. His music hit, and so Tommy Dreamer came out to the ring. I, I was wondering why Tommy Dreamer was out there, man. I was wondering why he was there. And so yeah, so KJ asked Tommy Dreamer, was like, "What, dude? What is going on with your hair, man? What is going on with your hair?" And so both of these guys they laughed, and the crowd had laughed too. And so Dreamer he talked about Christian Cage. He said that you know he cares about the Impact locker room. And all the guys in the back, unlike Don Callis and Kenny Omega. And, you know, he, he talked about how he was against Don Callis and Kenny Omega and what they stood for and all that stuff. And so Dreamer, he put over Christian as, you know, he said that Christian is passionate about the business and he cares about the business. And Dreamer, he had thanked Christian Cage for everything. He thanked him for everything. But most importantly, he thanked him for representing Impact Wrestling as the world champion. And so, so Tommy Dreamer, he said that he would love, he would love the opportunity to face Christian Cage one more time, one more time. But, you know, he has to earn it first. He said that he has to earn it first, but he hasn't earned it yet. But, you know, when he does earn it, he's going to, he wants a match with Christian Cage. And, you know, he too will want to outwork everyone. And so right after that, we had Ace Austin. Ace Austin and Madman Fulton, they interrupted Cage and Dreamer. And so Austin, he introduced himself to Christian Cage. And so Austin, he has said that at Victory Road, at Victory Road, he will be the youngest. He'll be the youngest Impact World Champion at 24 years old. And so Austin, he has said that, you know, Cage, you don't need to worry about Tommy Dreamer. You need to worry about me. You need to worry about me. And, 
you know, he said that Tommy Dreamer on his best day, he will never be a world champion ever again. And so Austin, he has said that, you know, yeah, right after he said that, Christian Cage, he has said that, Austin, you will never be the man. You will never be the man as long as I'm here. You will never be the man. And so, yeah, Cage, he had made fun of Austin's height and all that stuff. And so Austin, he attacked Christian Cage. And so a brawl had broke out with the four of these guys. And so Cage and Dreamer, they, they fought off Austin and Fulton. And so, yeah, that was it with that, man. Great promo from Christian Cage, bro. Christian Cage is always a great promo. He is always a great promo. Christian, man, he is so underrated, man. So underrated. He Like, he doesn't get the re the respect that he deserves, man. He doesn't get the appreciation that he deserves. Like, it's like, man, like his entire career, man, like he always been looked at as, a, as living in somebody's shadow and all that stuff. Like, when he was in WWE with Edge, they looked at Edge as the bigger star and all that stuff. And, you know, he was. He was the bigger star. And so, you know, WWE, they found no value in him to him. They found no value in him. And he left, went to TNA, Impact, made a bigger name up for himself. Made a bigger name for himself in Impact. For the three years he'd been there, made a bigger name for himself. And he came back to the WWE expecting to be an even more bigger name. But they never did anything with him. You know, yeah, he became world champion, but he lost it. He lost it in the same week. He lost it in the same week on Friday Night SmackDown. I remember that SmackDown. He lost it to Randy Orton on that SmackDown. And I, and he, and I was like, man, why did they take the title off of him so quick? They took it off of him so quickly, and then they turned him heel, and he won it again. You know, he won it by disqualification and all that stuff. I'm like, man, oh, no. You know, great for you, great for you between Cage and Randy Orton, but they never shouldn't have took that title off of him, man, that quickly that they did. But yeah, man. And now, man, now he's doing his thing in AEW, man. AEW and Impact Wrestling. So Christian Cage, who's who's better, man? Who's better than Christian Cage right now? Impact World Champion. You know, he beat Omega for the Impact World Championship. And, and now he's fighting Omega for the AEW World Championship at All Out in Chicago, man. So who's better, man? Who's better than Christian Cage right now? You know? So yeah, man. So who, like, who, who shadow is he living in now? Who shadow is he living in now? He's living in nobody's shadow. And so, yeah, man. And the back and forth. I love the back and forth with Ace Austin and Christian Cage on that on the mic. You know, Ace Austin, was he handled himself on the microphone really well with Christian. And so, yeah, man. So that was it with that. So, of course, this is going to be Christian Cage versus Ace Austin at Victory Road for the Impact World Championship. And so, yeah, man. So that was it with that. And so right after that, we have Violent by Design. They spoke, they did that vignette, they spoke as Eric Young, Rhino, Diener, and Joe Doran. And so, Eric Young, he spoke since he's the leader, he's the cult leader of Violent by Design. And so, yeah, they, they, don't, they don't call themselves a cult, but they're all, they are a cult. So, yeah, so they talked about weakness. So, Young started speaking about weakness. And so, he blamed Rhino for the loss and everything. And he blamed them for... You know, just the fact that they can't challenge for the tag team championships again. You know, Rhino, he lost twice. That first time that they fought for the titles, or that first time they lost the titles, Rhino's, Rhino got pinned. And he got pinned at Emergence, so they blaming Rhino for it. And so Young had told Rhino, like, you know, you're in the wrong. You're in the wrong. And something needs to happen. You know what needs to happen. And so Young, he had said that Rhino needs to be washed with the holy water of change. And so, yeah, that was it with that. So, Rhino will be getting this issue with Violent by Design. And so, yeah, man, so that was it. And so, right after that, we had Ace Austin. We had Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. So, they were upset. That was They were upset about what happened earlier tonight with Cage and Dreamer. And so, they started complaining to Scott Damore about, you know, everything that happened earlier. And so, Austin, he wanted a match. He wanted a match with Tommy Dreamer in a one-on-one -on -one match next week. And so, Scott, he has said that, Okay, you want the match? You got the match. You got the match, but there's only one catch. If you lose, if you lose to Tommy Dreamer, Tommy Dreamer will be added to the to the match. He'll be added to the World Championship match. So it's going to be a triple threat match if if Tommy Dreamer beats you. And so Austin, he was not happy. He was not happy about that. And so, yeah. So just, yeah, just off, just off him saying that, Tommy Dreamer is going to win this match. He's going to win the match. But... I don't agree with it. I don't agree with the triple threat, man. 
I don't I don't agree with the triple threat match because Ace Austin he earned he earned his number one contender spot. He earned it. Tommy Dreamer he didn't he didn't earn a title match. You know, he's beaten like if he beat the number one contender, he's added to the match. That don't that don't make any sense. That don't make any sense. Ace Austin, it should be a one on one match with 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 Cage and Austin because Austin he he beat like five other guys. He beat like five, four or five other guys to to win his one number one contender spot. So it should be a one on one match, not a triple threat match. So yeah. So yeah, if Dreamer wants a championship match, man, he's he's gonna have to earn it, man. He's gonna have to earn it. He's gonna have to beat more people, not just Ace Austin. He's not like he can't just beat Ace Austin to get a championship opportunity match. He got to go through everybody else. And you know, didn't get to the number one, number one contender. But yeah, man. So yeah, so right after that, man, we had Taylor Wilde versus the Influence. So that's the Neil Dashwood, Madison Rain, and Caleb with a K. So they're calling themselves the the Influence. So yeah, this was a handicap match. You know, you know, you remember how I said earlier, you know, we had a lot of great wrestling matches on this show. This was this was not great. This was not good. So yeah, this is a handicap match. You know, before the match even started, Taylor Wilde she had dove on Caleb. Madison Rain and Tanil Dashwood. And so the heels had took control of the match and then Wild started fighting back. We had a tornado DDT to Caleb that knocked his glasses off. I don't know why this guy competing in women's matches. I really don't. There's a difference between a mixed tag team match and, and competing in women's matches, man. He, this guy competing in women's matches. So yeah. So yeah, to end the match, we had a the spotlight. We had a the spotlight to Taylor Wilde from to Neil Dashwood to win the match. So the influence wins the match. And so right after the match, we had the influence. They attack Taylor Wilde and then Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering. They came out to the ring to even up the odds. So it took them a while to come out. They should have came out as soon as they attacked Taylor Wilde. And so, yeah, that was it with that. I did not care about this. Did not care about this. This is rematches. It's, it's, it's another rematch, dude. Like like rematch after rematch after rematch after rematch after rematch. Like when when will it end? And apparently it's not gonna end because they have a six women tag team match next week. So yeah, so that was it with that man. Really don't care about this feud. Really don't care. And so right after that we had Gia Miller. She interviews Brandy Lauren. So yeah, Brandy Lauren. She was actually in a match last week with Melina. And so Gia Miller. She had asked Brandy Lauren like her thoughts on Melina. She asked her about her thoughts about the Melina and Diana Perazzo match at Empower, the championship match at Empower. And so Lauren, she had said that Perazzo had a work cut out for her. And so right after that, we had the lights had cut off. So the lights had cut out and you saw red lighting and all that stuff. And some creepy music started playing. And so Gia had told Lauren, like, hey, Lauren, we got to get out of here. We got to go. We need to get out of here right now. And so she was still standing there. She wasn't even listening. She was still standing there. And so Kimberly had showed up and Gia Miller, she had left already. Or she just she just left. And so Kimberly had showed up and so Lauren had ran the other way. And so yeah, Lauren she tried to escape the building by opening the escape door or the exit door. And so when she opened it, Sue Young was on the other side. She was on the other side other side of the door. And so Lauren she had turned around to run the other way, but she ran into Kimberly. And so Kimberly had put her in a mandible claw with that nasty glove. And so, yeah, that was, that was it with that. And so, yeah, so right after that, man, we had Gia Miller again. Gia Miller, she interviews TJP. And so, yeah, TJP, he, he talked about Petey Williams for, you know, he talked about Petey Williams interfering in his match earlier on BTI, that pre-show before Impact Wrestling, which I don't watch. But yeah, so it was TJP versus Steve Macklin on that pre-show. And, you know, TJP, he was this close from winning the match. But, you know, Petey Williams got involved and took out Steve Macklin because Steve Macklin and Petey Williams, they got beef with each other. And so Williams, he had interrupted the interview with TJP and Gia Miller. And he asked TJP, like, hey, man, what's going on with you, man? You like, he's, you've been gone. You know, we haven't heard from you and all that stuff. Like, what, like, like dude, what's going on with you? And so, you know, TJP explained himself and everything. And, but he was he was still upset. He was still upset with Williams for interfering in his match, sticking his nose in his business. 
And so Williams has said, told TJP, like, hey, man, you should be thanking me, man. You should be, th you should be thanking me because if it wasn't for me, man, you would be hurt. You'll be hurt right now. You know, it would have been a lot worse. And so TJP said, I'm not going to thank you, man. I'm not going to thank you. I didn't even ask for your help, so why should I thank you? And so Williams, he has said that, okay, all right. If you don't want my help, then fine. You don't want my help. Let's just agree to stay away from each other. You stay out of my way, I'm going to stay out of your way. And so, yeah, that was it with that. So this is this is the same storyline with Sammy Callahan. Sammy Callahan and Eddie Edwards. That's the same same storyline, the same exact storyline. Like, hey, I helped you out. You helped me out. Let's stay out of each other's way. Dude, it's the same stuff. It's the same stuff with these two, four guys. But, yeah, man. So, yeah, so right after that, we had Matt Cardona. Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green. Always ready, Matt Cardona. And Chelsea Green. So, Matt Cardona, GCW World Champion. I had to put that in there. And so, yeah, they spoke. Cardona, he talked about Rohit Raju and Shira. And so, Cardona, he, you know, he said that this feud should be over. He said this feud should be over. But you made a mistake. You made a mistake, Raju and Shira, by doing what y'all did, did at Emergence. And so Green had challenged Rohit Raju and Shira to a tag team match with herself and Matt Cardona. And so Cardona was like, wait a minute. Are you are you sure about this? It's Rohit Raju and Shira. Are you sure you want to step in the ring with them? And so Green, she has said that she's always ready. She had a t-shirt that said, always ready. I'm always ready. And so, yeah, that was it with that. So it's going to be a tag team match. So, yeah. And then right after that, we had another interview. It was Gia Miller. She interviews Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans. And so Gia Miller, she talked about their their loss at Emergence. So she asked them about their loss. Oh, sh**. <laughs> Dude, my earphones just dropped to the ground. My whole, my freaking power beats. My power beats dropped to the, the ground. Oh, my God, dude. So, yeah, so Gia Miller, she interviews Tasha Stills and Savannah Evans. And, yeah, she had asked them about their loss and everything. And so Tasha Stills had said that we didn't lose. We did not lose our match. It was Fala. Fala got pinned in that, in that mixed person tag team match. And so Stills had said that Fala had costed them the opportunity to challenge for the Knockouts Tag Team Championships. And so Fala had interrupted. And so Fala, he said that, you know, he's going to make it up to them. He's going to make it up to Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans. And so Steeles had said, there's no making it up. There's nothing you can do. And so Fala Ba said that, you know, he and No Way Jose will take out Black Tarus and Crazy Steve. So that way you guys can focus on your on the knockouts titles. And so, yeah, man. So Steeles had said, we'll see. So, yeah, it's either going to be them or Sue Young and Kimberly going after the tag team titles. So, yeah. And so, yeah, right after that, man, before we get into the main event, man, let's talk about next week's show. So next week's show, man, we have. So next week's show, we have. We have a six persons tag. So it's the influence. That's Tasha, not Tasha, Tennille Dashwood, Madison Rain and Caleb, the influence versus Jordan Grace, Rachel Ellering and Taylor Wilde. So yeah, not not a huge fan of the match. This is, this is a rematch, man. Tennille Dashwood, you know Jordan Grace, Rachel Ellering, they already fought them. They they had a few with the influence. Well, they had a few with Tennille Dashwood and Caleb. But yeah, still the same feud. Even though you added you added Madison Rain to it, it's still the same feud. And then you have Rohit Raju and Shira versus Always Ready Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green in a tag team match. So, yeah, and we have Josh Alexander. We have Josh Alexander. He calls out, he has an open challenge. He has an open challenge next week to all former X Division champions who want to step up to a championship match. And we have Tommy Dreamer. We have Ace Austin with Madman Fulton in his corner versus Tommy Dreamer. And if Tommy Dreamer wins the match, he will be added to the world championship match at Victory Road. And so, yeah, so that's it with that. The match is for next week. And so, yeah, so right after that, we had the Good Brothers. So the main event, we had the Good Brothers versus the Good Brothers, who are the Impact Tag Team Champions. 
as Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson representing the super elite versus Rich Swan and Willie Mack. And so Anderson and Swan, they went back and forth. We had a double team move to Anderson. And then Mack and Swan, they went after Gallows' arm. And then Gallows started hitting his corner punches and uppercuts to Swan. And then we had a roundhouse kick to Mack from Gallows. And so Mack, he had a pop-up forearm, a pop-up forearm to Anderson to create some space. And so we had a hot tag to Swan. He took out the Good Brothers with kicks. And so Carl Anderson, he had a, a spine buster, a beautiful spine buster, man, to Rich Swan. And he kicks out. And so Anderson, he tried to go for the gun stun, but he missed. And Swan, he had rolled up Carl Anderson to win the match. So Rich Swan and Willie Mack wins the match. And so right after the match, we had the Good Brothers. They took out Rich Swan and Willie Mack. So, yeah, they took out Rich Swan first. And so, really, Mack, he tried to even up the odds. He tried to take them out by his own or by himself. And so, but the numbers had caught up to Willie Mack. And so, the Good Brothers, they had put the chair. They had grabbed the chair and they put it in the corner. And so, they threw Swan into the chair. And so, yeah, we, so, yeah, so the Good Brothers, they had the magic killer. They had the magic killer on Mack. And so, we had the elite chant from the crowd. And so, the Good Brothers, they, Threw Swan into a chair again. And so the the Good Brothers, they put out a table from under the ring. And they put it on the stage. And so they hit a power bomb. They power bombed Willie Mack through the table. And so the table was broken. And so that was it with that. So they the Good Brothers, they stood tall with their championships and all that stuff. And that was it. And so I, I was like, man, why did they lose the match? Like, like why like why are they losing the match? Like, dude, they are the champions. And, he, and dude, I, I say this. Time and time again, like I do, I sound like a broken record, man. When I say this, champions should never lose, man. They should never lose in non-title matches. The only time a champion should lose is if it's if, if it's a championship match. That's the only time a champion should lose, because if you have them lose in a non-title match, man. Like the 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 championship lose prestige, it lose value, and then the person that holding the championship lose value and prestige, and the championship is not gonna look important. You don't you don't see Kenny Omega losing in non-title matches. You don't see Roman Reigns losing in non-title matches. You don't see Josh Alexander losing in non-title matches. You don't see Christian Cage losing in non-title matches in Impact Wrestling. Who else, man? You like anybody else, man? That's booked strong as a champion. You don't see them losing in non-title matches. The only time they would lose if it's a championship match. You know, Omega he lost he lost the Impact World Championship. You know, as the AEW World Champion. But he lost. He lost a championship match. He didn't lose in a non-title match. He lost in a title match. So, why why are we having our tag team champions lose in a non-title match? And why why would you book this ending? Dude, it would have been a lot better. It would have been a lot better if you would have booked this ending. Like, like it would have been a lot better if they would have won. And then you would have booked this ending with the, with the beatdown attack. It would have been a lot better. But no, you had them lose. Like, dude, no, don't, don't. Why would you have your champions lose, period, man? I would, like, I would never, I would never have my champions lose, period, man. Period. Point blank, or, no, point blank, period. I would never have my champions lose. But, yeah, man, that was it with Impact Wrestling, man. That was it. You know, good show, man. It was good. You know, great wrestling tonight on this show. And they easily, they're building up to a victory road. And Bound for Glory, they, they, they've they been talking about Bound for Glory the entire night. So I can't wait for that. And yeah, man. And so, yeah, man. So, yeah, that was it. That was it with Impact Wrestling, man. Nothing else happened. But yeah, man. That was it with Impact Wrestling for August the 26th, 2021 on D-Ryan Awesome Show. And if you liked this video, man, what are you waiting for, man? Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up if you're new to the channel. If you're watching D-Ryan Awesome Show for the first time ever. Hit that subscribe button, and right next to it, there's a bell. Make sure you click on that bell so you're the first ones to know my next video is uploaded because I am here every single week, man. Tuesdays for NXT, Wednesdays for AEW Dynamite, Thursday tonight, where you're seeing this, is Impact Wrestling, Fridays for AEW Rampage, and Saturdays and Sundays are for the pay-per-views, if they have their pay-per-views on Saturdays or Sundays, whether it's AEW pay-per-views, WWE pay-per-views, or Impact Wrestling pay-per-views, I'm there. And so, yeah, man, follow me on Twitter, man. Follow me on Twitter at Ryan Awesome Show. And, yeah, man, I'll see you guys for Friday. I'll see you guys on Friday for AEW Rampage on Friday. 
And yeah, man. And once again, guys, thank you for the support, man. Thank you for the love and the support for the show. And if you missed the Impact Wrestling Emergence review, the video is going to be right up here. So this so this is a, a fused up video. This is a fused video. So it's the Emergence and the AEW Rampage video put together. So yeah, the Impact Wrestling, the portion of the Impact Wrestling Emergence review is that first portion of the, of the video. So the video is going to be right up here in this corner. And if you missed the Go Home Show before Emergence, the video is going to be right up here, man. It's going to be right up here in this corner. And the link to both of these videos will be down below in the description. Down below in the description. The links will be down below in the descriptions. And so, yeah, man. And, yeah, as always, thank you for the support. And, yeah, man. And this has been The Ryan Awesome Show. Take care. Stay safe. And don't forget to be awesome. And that's that.